But yeah, man, welcome back to the Snake Trap Sessions. I am so excited to be back. What is good, everybody? It's your boy MJ up in the building. Welcome back to another episode of the Snake Trap Sessions vlog. If this is your first time tapping in, what is good? Do your boy a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. That way you're on top of every single piece of content that I come out here on the Snake Trap Session. And I come out with four podcasts every week. Nobody else in the game doing that but me. Super crucial that you hit that notification bell. That way you're not slept on any of the podcasts that I come out with. You're not slept on any of the vlogs that I come out with. So many reasons why you should be subscribed and hit that notification bell. And definitely so many reasons why you should hit that like button, especially if you're not a Bob Smith. I am so excited. I want to say from the bottom of my heart, shout out to all my Patreon members out there. We just hit 100 Patreon members. I can't believe I have this many true trappers in the building that want to support what I'm doing. And guess what? I'm taking this full force, not letting off the throttle, not even a little bit. So I got to say every single one of you Patreon members out there, all 100 of you, the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you. I love you guys. We are a family and we are tight knit. I'm saying right now, I'm still accepting more Patreon members. Why not? Okay. This family is growing and we want to continue to grow. So if you out there want to join and be a part of a sick ass community, be a part of a sick ass discord full of so many different channels, anywhere about snakes, cooking and fitness, all that great stuff in the Trap Talk family today. I will give you the link to the Discord after you join. I'm really excited about this week's vlog, mainly because I lied to every single one of you guys. Yes, that's right. For all of you who listen to me on my podcast, for all of you who listen to me on my Instagram stories, that crap about me saying I'm no longer going to get an import, no longer picking up any Emborio imports, I am done. I lied. Guess what I did? I bought an import. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. I was at Arlington, minding my own damn business, keeping my damn eyes on the ground, trying not to look at any snakes. And I walked, I don't even remember the guy's table. I actually have to walk by a table. I saw this the corner and what caught my eye was this big, luscious, green, northern emerald tree boa. I could not keep my eyes off of it. I studied this snake so crazy, was looking at it. The guy was actually nice enough to let me open up his mouth just so I could kind of see what the gums and, the, and just see what the mouth coloration looked like inside the mouth and whatnot. And he let me do it. She has really big size to her and I bought her. I'm gonna tell you the honest truth, the 50% honest truth. I bought her mainly so I could go ahead and document my experience with this import. I've had plenty of experiences working with imports. My freezer speaks for itself. And it has been a long time since I've added any kind of import snake into my collection but i think it's time I, I don't think every import situation is a bad situation depending on the luck and depending on who you get it with i do not know the guy i got this with but i was able to look at the snake i was able to inspect it and i felt confident enough giving this guy the money and rolling the dice on this snake keep in mind the money i paid on this snake in my head it's already gone i already feel like that i'm never gonna get that money back and i'm okay with that because i just want to share my experience with you guys on what it's like to work with an imported arboreal snake. About a couple days ago, I got this snake in the mail. I'm gonna show you the protocols I have when receiving an import snake inside the mail. And then I'm gonna show you the quarantine tub that it's in. I'm gonna explain exactly what my plan is as far as getting this thing established and getting it fully quarantined and letting you know how long I'm gonna quarantine and all that good stuff, okay? So why don't we get inside the trap? Why don't we talk a little bit more about this? And why don't we take a look at this beautiful female Northern Emerald Tree Boa that I just got at Arlington Show. Let's tap in, let's get inside the trap. Oh, before I forget, I just went ahead and decided with the whole Patreon family that we're going to go ahead and release these Trap Talk Patreon Special Edition Pocket Tee t-shirts. That's right. You could actually get yourself a Trap Talk Podcast Pocket T-shirt. Feel free to shoot me an email, reach out to me on Instagram, or shoot me a comment below. Let me know if you'd like to go ahead and get yourself a shirt. I'll let you know how you could go ahead and get yourself a shirt, but they are going to be available to all my other trappers out there, for all my viewers out there. So be ready to jump on this wave. I'm only going to come out with just a few. Contact me to be on the pre-order list, and I'll make sure I'll get you one of these special edition pocket tees. What is good, everybody? 
buddy. We are inside the trap yet again. All right, so yeah, I lied to you guys. My bad, I'm sorry, but I am very passionate about emerald tree boas. And no, I don't have enough of them. Enough people are breeding them. Still a lot of people work with them, but there's not enough people breeding emerald tree boas. This is the kind of situation where if you've had experience working with imports, you're very passionate about working with certain snakes that aren't being bred in the United States, if you come across an import that looks healthy and you're very passionate about it and you have experience working with the import, it might be some dice you might want to roll like myself, okay? So if this is going to be your situation or if you want to get into imports in general, I'm going to just break down what my 101s are when it comes to taking in an import, what my protocols are. I'll show you the setup the Emerald's in currently and what it's going to be in for the next six months. At the end of the day, there's different ways of approaching an import when when first getting it in some people like to go ahead and offer food right away to their import to see if it's going to take food and see how it's going to digest it that's one way of doing it some people like to medicate their animal first with either agile or some panic here uh, to treat it and then they offer it food that's one way of doing it or there's the other option where people just kind of let the animal get settled make sure it gets fully hydrated and then maybe in a few weeks offer it some food it all comes down really on how the snake looks okay if the snake comes in looking like it hasn't had a meal in a long time i probably want to get a meal inside that snake as soon as possible but then you also don't want to stress it out too there has to, there has to be a happy medium when it comes to offering a meal to an import when you're first getting it in that's kind of up to you really what i like to do is option three personally okay and especially because because after inspecting the emerald and seeing how healthy and how girthy and, and just overall how good the snake looks, I don't feel like I am in a dire need to treat the animal with any kind of parasite medication. I don't feel like I need to hurry up and get the snake eating immediately because based off my inspection on what my intentions are telling me, I feel like there's no need to treat anything that doesn't need to be treated yet. That being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the emerald tree now. Let's take a look at its body structure. Let's see how it's doing. I have not had it for a week yet. Uh, this coming next Tuesday would be an official seven days of it being with me. First thing I did when getting it in was I soaked it for about 15 to 20 minutes. I actually witnessed it take a good drink of water. Um, so that made me feel good that it actually was drinking water. And then I went ahead and put it away in this quarantine tub. Why don't we dip into the nor Northern Emerald Tree Bowl. Let's take a look at it and you guys be the judge and tell me how she looks. All right guys, so here is the Northern Emerald Tree Boas Quarantine Tub. I'm gonna show you how simple I have this tub set up. Nothing bioactive or anything like that. I mean, I do have a house plant in there just to keep up the humidity and whatnot. This is just a simple, simple, straightforward setup. That way, if there's anything that comes off this animal, if there's anything as far as defecation um, that I need to look at, I'm gonna be able to spot it easy here on this puppy pad, okay? So you could use paper towel, you could use newspaper. I just don't recommend using substrate with a quarantine animal straight off the bat. This is just my recommendation. Plenty of people do it. No disrespect to them. I'm just saying, me personally, just like to go with paper because you could spot things easier. I'm telling you right now, paper is the way to go or puppy pads, okay? Um, and it's easy to clean up as well, but yeah, let's take a look at her real quick, guys. Um, like I said, I have not messed with her at all. I'm letting her do her thing. She does not move much, only to get a drink of water from what I've uh, from what I've seen. But look how big she is. There she is. But yeah, I have not probed her yet um, or done any of that. Yeah, here she is. So what I'm doing with this animal is, like I said, I'm giving her a couple weeks just to get settled in. She has not showed me any sign of her being hungry. Um, even when I was feeding of the other snakes, I had food out and, you know, she was just wanting to be left alone. So this snake, like I said, does not look like it needs any meals. You know, it, there could be a high chance that it had a meal before I even bought her. So why am I going to want to risk the chance of just putting another meal in this snake when it probably doesn't need it yet? This is how she looks like. I think she looks really awesome. Good, good girthy head. Looks like she means business. I'm spraying her every other day. Not too heavy, but I do give her a good spray. Um, and yeah, again, here's the setup. Okay, real basic, guys. 
If everything goes right and this snake passes quarantine, then she will go inside a brand new Focus Cube 3x2x2 enclosure, along with all the other designer um, emeralds and condos that I have inside the podcast room. So we'll see what happens, man, day by day. But I'm glad I get to show you guys this beautiful emerald. Now you see why I rolled the dice. Now you see why I went ahead and took the gamble. Yeah, we'll see what happens. As beautiful as this snake looks, nothing is for sure until it eats. Once this snake takes down a good sized meal, that's gonna be the true indicator on what's going on with this snake. I'm gonna wait a couple weeks like I already stated. I'm in no rush. I may even wait until she actually shows me a sign that she's hungry, okay? But at the end of the day, based off how good she looks, I'm in no rush to get, get this snake fed. I'm in no rush to medicate it, to shove meds down its throat or inject it with anything. You know, because I feel like when you do all those precautionary things, it's just too much. It could stress the animal. Now, again, this is just my own, my own opinion. I'm not going to say I've established tons of imports, but I've, I've established a good amount of imports. I've had a good amount of imports die on me. So this is with my instinct, plus with my experience, rolling the dice and let's see what happens. We exit out of this segment of the uh, vlog here. I want to let you know that the temperatures uh, that I'm running for this emerald, it's about 85 to 86 on the warm side. And then this side's about 80. This room stays at 80 um, ambient the entire time. So this is rooms that this room's at ambient 80. So 80 ambient is ideal for an emerald tree. And I uh, don't believe the hotspot needs to be anything higher than 86 personally. That's just how I run things here. So just thought I'd break down the uh, am, the temperatures um, on how I'm running it for the emerald tree. All right, so what'd you guys think? Pretty beautiful, right? She doesn't look like she's starving. She doesn't look like she's dying of hunger. So I'm in no rush to get food in this snake. I'm in no rush to try to get it to strike. I'm in no rush to medicate it for anything if it looks this good. Instead, if I see signs of anything, then that's when I wanna go ahead and be prepared for anything. Now, I will say I have Panicure ready, I have Flagyl ready, I do have medicine ready to go just in case. I just don't wanna to resort to medicine right off the bat when I'm not seeing any signs of anything, if that makes any sense. Now, that's just how I do things. As you guys can see, unless I have, you know, Stevie Wonder Vision and I'm not seeing this correctly, this snake looks beautiful, looks awesome. She's drinking water. I've been you know, spraying her accordingly as I need. I'm gonna share this whole entire import experience with you guys here on the Snake Trap Sessions vlog. So good or bad, no matter what happens with this animal, I feel like maybe once every few weeks, maybe twice a month, you update on this Northern Emerald Tree boa and tell you how things are going. But at the end of the day, Imports can either be a good thing or bad thing depending on the situation and depending on your experience, depending on your research, depending on how you approach this. It's not going to be easy, I'm telling you right now. So shout out to the experienced breeders out there who were kind of on my bumper um, when they saw my story post about me wanting to inquire it. You know, Warren Booth told me to run away as fast as I could. Ian Bessel kind of lost his, you know, mind there for a second. But at the end of the day, I know what I'm getting myself into. If this emerald passes away, I'm not gonna beat myself up over it. I did my best, I tried my best. I'm definitely not gonna go on a Facebook group or an Instagram group or whatever and you know blame the breeder or blame the person who sold me the animal. This is a imported animal. You get what you pay for. Did I pay United States Cats and Born and Bread price for this animal? Not even a little bit, I paid them. Whatever I paid, I paid and I'm okay with what I paid. So whatever happens, happens. I can tell you right now that I'm gonna do my damn best to get this thing thriving. I'm gonna do my bet. I'm gonna do my damn best to get this thing out of quarantine and get it into the podcast room where it belongs with the other designers. I know it's not a designer, but I call my snakes and they're a designer. Take it or leave it, I don't care. And that's all we have on this Trap Talk session. I wanna go ahead and just share and be honest with you guys that yes, I'm back in the import game. Not fully, I'm just gonna work with this import. I'm gonna see what happens. If I can add an, another beautiful female Northern to my group of six that I have already, well then why not, okay? But day by day, nothing's guaranteed. I'm gonna share everything with you guys. I'm not gonna hide anything. I'm not gonna cap, I'm not gonna do any of that. It's all gonna go down here on the Snake Trap Sessions blog. So. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button notification bell right now is your time to do it. Make sure you smash that like button and then also make sure you stay on top of my podcasts that I drop here on the Snake Shop Sessions vlog. I have an epic podcast going down this Saturday right after this vlog. Be ready to tap in. We're gonna be tapping in with my boy Gavin from Balls to You. My boy Gavin has been such an inspiration to me. This is gonna be our round two one-on-one. We have so much to catch up on. I just saw my boy here at Arlington. Finally got to meet him. So I cannot wait to talk about that. And we're also gonna talk about a little bit of awareness. Bullying going on.
going on and harassing going on in the hobby. And what's happening is it's actually coming from across seas. There's actually harassing and bullying coming from across the pond. So, you know, my boy, my boy Gavin is from across the pond. Let me tap in on this ordeal with my boy Gavin. Let's see what he has to say. Let's see what all you viewers have to say. And then let's tap in from there. Like I said, cool swept podcast in the world. And you know, that's a fact. I appreciate all my love and support. And I will catch you guys here next week on another Snake Trap Sessions vlog. And I'm out. Cheap! Oh,